Brewing coffee with a pour-over method. Manual brewers are becoming more widespread in the coffee market, so where do you begin if you want to start brewing on your own? This video will cover how to brew coffee with the pour-over method. Manual brewers have grown widespread throughout the coffee world. From cafes to restaurants to your friend's kitchen counter, you've probably seen one recently. The surge in popularity of manually brewed coffee over the last few years has resulted in a plethora of different brewers, each performing a little bit differently than the next. Pour-over drippers, in particular, have gained in popularity, becoming the most easily accessible brewers, while also growing more diversified in terms of design, size, filter materials and usage recommendations. So, where do you begin if you want to start brewing on your own? Well, keep on watching the video to learn some great pour-over tips and more. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you find this video helpful. The gear. There aren't a hundred accessories required to brew decent coffee, but there are a few that are required for consistent quality. Pour-over brewers must have a good burr grinder, a slow pouring kettle, and a gram scale. If you choose a kettle without a temperature indicator, we also recommend using a thermometer to monitor temperature stability. The grind. The single most critical variable in brewing consistently high quality coffee is grind consistency and homogeneity. Fortunately, it's also one of the simplest coffee problems to address with the correct tools. It will be easier to experiment with what works for you once you have a good burr grinder. But the basic rule to remember is that the finer the grind, the shorter the contact time that the brew should require, and vice versa. As a result, a medium coarse ground Chemex will require a longer brew time than a medium fine ground V60. For many brewers, the ideal grind size is also determined by the batch size Therefore, your little O1 size V60 will require a finer grind than your larger O2 size V60. This is a good variable to play with as you fine-tune your process. If your coffee is regularly thin, weak or sour, try a finer grind setting. If your coffee is consistently bitter, harsh or brothy, try a coarser grind setting. The Ratio your coffee brew ratio will serve as the foundation for your recipe. Many specialists recommend 60 grams of coffee for every one liter of water used, or roughly one gram of coffee for every 16.7 grams of water. Any brew ratio between 1 to 15 and 1 to 17 will meet specialty coffee criteria, but modifying it will have a significant impact on other variables in your brew so I recommend selecting the one you enjoy and keeping with it until you feel sure about the other variables you manage. Water The importance of water to coffee cannot be stressed enough. It will keep your equipment in good condition and will allow your coffee to shine to its greatest potential. You won't need inline filtration at home but making your own high-quality water is becoming increasingly simple. These low-cost, high-quality brew water alternatives from Global Customized Water, Third Wave Water and Peak Water Pitcher are difficult to beat. The temperature. You can brew coffee with any temperature of water you want if you try hard enough. Hello, cold brew and it can be tough to agree on a single, optimal temperature for brewing. According to the SCA, the recommended temperature range for brewing coffee is 195 degrees Fahrenheit to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, 90.5 degrees Celsius to 96 degrees Celsius, when water comes into contact with ground coffee. Other experts recommend using water that is just off the boil, 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius, while several AeroPress Championship recipes ask for water that is 176 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius. What we can tell for certain is that the stability is vital regardless of the brew temperature you choose. 
thus thoroughly preheating your brewer to ensure that you don't lose too much heat too quickly will be critical for your consistency as a brewer. Brewing coffee with a pour over method in a Hario V60. Now that you've learned a little bit about the components necessary to brewing with this specific method, let's give you an example. The Hario V60 is still one of the most well-known and easily identified manual coffee brewers, but the Hario switch takes the traditional design to a whole new level. The classic cone design fits snugly in the silicon base, which changes the pour-over into an immersion brewer with the help of a stainless steel ball and a switch. It employs V60 O2 filters and allows you to brew coffees with varying flavours and mouthfeels with the same machine. When utilising the switch, we recommend a medium grind for a 20 gram dose. This grind size works nicely as both an immersion and a pour over. Begin by placing your filter in the brewer and thoroughly washing it. To use the switch as an immersion brewer, turn the switch to the closed position to prevent the decline from starting. Pour in 240 grams of water and whirl it around for two and a half to three minutes. When the timer runs out, flip the switch to start the drawdown. The entire brewing process takes roughly three minutes. To use the switch as a pour over, flip the switch down so the opening is not obstructed. Then brew as you would a regular V60. The switch allows you to manipulate the bloom by flipping it into the closed position, letting the water remain in direct contact with the coffee grounds before flipping it back into the open position and starting the drawdown. Making coffee is a delicate balancing act. With so many different roasting styles, brewing techniques and new coffee equipment to choose from, it might be difficult to decide which brew method is best for you. As we mentioned earlier, you'll need to back up and grasp how coffee brewing works and how different brew methods differ. Only then can you make an educated judgement about which gadgets and methods will work best for the type of coffee you enjoy drinking. And now that you are aware of how to brew coffee with the pour over method, let us know in the comments if you plan on doing so. As always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.